know about the life-saving advantages of condoms, but guess what? Over 80% of heterosexuals with more than one partner still don't use them. And I want to know why. Which is the reason our first two guests are here today. Dennis Bates is actually one of those rare guys who's into condoms. Warren Zena, on the other hand, is not. Now, Warren, why don't you wear condoms? Well, <clears throat> it's not that I don't wear them. They're booing over here already, I'm hearing. Give him a chance to explain himself Thank first. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. I didn't say I didn't wear them. I said I don't like to wear them. There's a difference. Okay. Yes. Um, so explain that difference to me, because does that mean that, that when you're actually having sex, do you have sex without condoms? Um, well, this is how I've dealt with the problem. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't like to wear them, and I would assume that, guys, do you like to wear them? Do you yeah. like to wear them? Yeah. Well, I'm hearing both Given here. a preference. Give, okay. well, that's the point. Just, I'm just going, this Who is in the audience here it says, given a preference, he, he does like to use condoms? Guys over here do. Okay. Stand up, you. You, you use them. Yep. You like to use them. Yep. Okay, tell me why. Well, uh, Claps for him. Okay. Okay, why? Why? Well, I just want to know that, you know, you know I only have one, so I got to protect what I have. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you only have one life. One, you one life, yeah, that's it. I okay. got to protect it. I got to protect her, too, so. Okay. I like it. Okay, okay. Now, Warren, back okay, yeah. to you for a second. Mm -hmm. Thanks. You, um, you know, obviously, about the dangers of, of absolutely. STDs, AIDS, of all course, that. Absolutely. Okay. Now, so does that, that comes into your mind? Of when course you're, it does. When you're dealing and with I agree with him 100%. He's not wrong at all. And mm -hmm. I agree. He's okay. right. And I encourage everybody to wear condoms. Mm -hmm. The point is, I'm talking about in terms of the experience itself, the pleasure aspect of the experience, condoms versus non condoms. It, it's better to not wear them. So I'm saying is it's an uncomfortable experience to wear them. That's all. It's not an issue of me not liking them. Okay, but let's talk about what you actually do. I mean, do you right. are you one of those people who who thinks that you can take the risk and it just it won't happen to you? Well, you won't get those. I will. Diseases? I will say that I have taken the risk. It's not something I'm happy about, but I've done it. I don't prefer to. I I would rather wear them, but I've had some um, awkward experiences with wearing condoms because. Um, I just put it this way. I, I've been. Go ahead, uh, put it this way. I yes. Will. Yeah, yeah, put it. Please. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, the fact is that when I was uh, first sexually active, it was at a time where condoms weren't really an issue, at least to the, to the extent they are now. So uh, sexually, Not, I was. They should have been they should for have many been. other reasons. Right, but they too. Weren't. Uh, we had plenty of STDs I mean, let's before face AIDS it, came along. When I was start, first starting off having sex, it, it really wasn't an issue. They weren't mentioned. It was more or less birth control, was there were other options. There was. The, uh, options that women had to deal with. Right, for which, the most you know, part. by the way, yeah, I know about those fine, options. But yeah. okay. let me tell you something else. If there was a male pill, I'd take it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have okay. no problem with that. Okay, but we're not just talking okay. about birth control. I'm not we're saying that I want it to things. be. It's not a gender thing. Let me ask you something else, though, Warren. Yeah. What about if you're with a woman and she wants to use a condom? Then I will. Then you will. Of course. I'm not going to say no. Oh, okay. 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 Of course. Now, I'm not going to say, well, no, baby. I'm not going to use those things. Those things are ugly. <laughs> I'll put it on if that's the case. Okay. I'm saying is it won't be as enjoyable an experience as it would be without. So the issue is, pre preferably, I'd rather not wear one. But so you have had okay. So I just want to get to the bottom of it. So you've had unprotected sex yes. within the last year or yes. so. Yes, you have. Yes, I have. How do you feel afterwards? Do you feel bad about scared, it? Scared, frightened. You, you feel scared. Yes. What? What about? Are, do you have? Um, do you have AIDS tests and yes, stuff like that I've to know that test. you have? So, yes. and I was with one girl for a long period of time. Only we were monogamous, which is actually how I prefer it, and I prefer everyone should be that way too. Mm -hmm. um, what's happened as a result of this is um, over the last uh, three or four years, I've changed uh, the way I approach the whole thing. I mean, promiscuity is not in anymore. First of all, for a lot of reasons. This one, obviously, the main reason, but also because it's just it's really not fun. Okay. But what you do is you meet somebody, you get to know them, you become friends for a little while, you see if maybe you like the person a lot, you spend a lot of time together and you decide whether or not you're going to have and sex. Then and then you trust you do, them well, no, when I they think say the best they've way had to do an AIDS that point is to both of you to go together and get one together. Mm -hmm. and, okay, okay. Let me, let me get to Dennis over here because, Dennis, you actually have the opposite problem. You, you're kind of the person here who shows us that it's not just guys who aren't into them because your girlfriend isn't into using oh. condoms. Um, but you are. What explain to us? What okay, the um, it's monogamous. It's my girl and I. But she, 
well, she wouldn't mind having a child. I would. Um, I, I don't want a child right now. I'm not married. Um, I want more financial stability. So she says, oh, don't worry about it. You know, it's more enjoyable without the condom. And granted, it is. It is a little more enjoyable without it. But I've, I've become very used to using them. And it's not such a big thing. And it, not only will it prevent us, you know, it helps prevent sexual diseases, but also on um, pregnancy. And um, she doesn't mind becoming pregnant, but I do. And does it, does it cause problems in your relationship oh, with her? What, yeah. How does she oh. react? Sex is a battle with my girlfriend, okay? <laughs> it's a battle. Hey, everybody here you. relates to that, okay? Right, it is a battle, all right? Um, the desire is high. We're both passionate. We fight a lot. In fact, I don't know how long we're going to last. Uh, last night we had a fight about me coming on the show. Um, what, just coming on to talk about it, yeah, upset fact, her. I wanted her to come on. Lucky you, she's not here, because there would have been some fight, let me tell you, okay? Oh, lucky me. I would've, that would have been good, <laughs> but anyway. Blood shit everywhere. Okay. But what, what actually happens? Just give us the scenario. I'll give you, all right, I'll, I'll give you last night, okay? Um, Please do. <laughs> we're together, we start hugging, kissing, you know. It goes into the, into the how shall I say, sex mode. And, um, <laughs> and uh, I go for a rubber. Now, I try to make it enjoyable. I have, like, since I was a kid, since I was about 16 or whatever, I've, I saw, like, condoms in a store, strange kind, like rubber ducky, king condom. So it's a joke. I, I collect records. I'm a musician, okay? I play in a metal band and rap. And um, I collect uh, rubbers. I, in fact, behind this pillow, I have a, a ton of different rubbers, which I'll show you later. You brought them on the show later. with him. Okay. Voluntarily. And you can pull them out. It's okay. We can see right. some of them. I have. Thank Perfect you. For, thank you. for rubbers. Okay. I have a so, bag of rubbers. And... Did you get into this collection, let me ask, because your girlfriend wasn't into them and you were kind of trying to entice her to get more interested in them, so you started collecting well, different types, thinking maybe she didn't like the red one, she'd like the purple one, or whatever. Well, that, that's not a bad theory. Actually, I got into them just for the, the fun of it, because it's, I mean, look, look at some of these condoms. The stealth <laughs> He condom, showed me a few of them before he came on. The They're stealth. Fun. The stealth do, do you know condom. what it says behind it? They'll never see you coming, okay? <laughs> the stealth. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm starting to blush here. You can show a few more while we go out uh, to a break. We will, we'll be right back with proof of what can happen if you don't use your condoms. Okay, we're back, and I'd like you to meet Carol Millman, who can tell you about the best reason to wear a condom, protection against AIDS. Now, Carol, when did you first find out that you had AIDS? Uh, Gee, <laughs> audience reaction um, to the word AIDS. I guess honestly, well, you should be scared of that word. Yeah. I went to a routine prenatal checkup, and this doctor handed me this white piece of paper with a, I, I read it, it said anti, uh, HIV antibody test. And I said, what are you doing? Don't insult me like this, you know? I, I mean, I don't have AIDS, look at me, I'm fine. <coughs> He said, well, it's a routine test, test, and we're testing everybody on it routinely to um, everybody who's pregnant. I, you know, after 10 minutes, he talked me into it. I did it. Two weeks later, I went back, and uh, I sat down, and I said, you know, okay, let's pass the AIDS test, because still, I'm fine. And he said, no, we can't. And I said, well, what do you mean? And he says, well, we took the test three times, and they all came up positive. And now I'm five months pregnant, and I'm thinking back, oh, my God, you know, I, I never shot any drugs. You know, what's going on here? And then um, I went outside, I got my husband, and we came, he came back in, and I thought, you know, this was it, my baby was going to come out dead, you know, a skeleton, and I'm dying next month, my life is over. And until I started meeting people and getting into cliques like the PWA of, you know, here right. and there, you know, I started people to realize people, people can, things. you know, can, like, live, and, you know, I found the statistics for the babies and this and that, and then, you know, you start getting eased. Did you figure out, though, you said you didn't do drugs, did you figure yeah. out how you got it? It was definitely sexually transmitted. I don't know who, I don't know when, I don't know if I infected anybody, I don't know who infected me. I do know I was miseducated in school, you know, I was told in 84 that it's an um, IV drug users and a gay man's disease. So I went out with that knowledge. And, uh, and so you had um, heterosexual sex unprotected, and that's how you got it. You don't know who, yeah. but that's how you got yeah. it. And um, and what about your husband? He got did yeah did he, he, get he got it from te you he tested no actually we don't know uh, he got tested the same day and then two weeks later we found out he was positive too but the thing was is that when we tested and then we got something called our T cells done 
both our T cells, we were already considered having AIDS. You know, our T cells were really low. Mm -hmm. So, like, we both had this for a while. You know, and the scary thing is that I'm fine. You know, I feel fine. I, you know, I look fine. There's nothing wrong with me. And you would never know by looking at me that I have AIDS. Mm -hmm. And that's the scary thing. Like, that's why the audience, I think, went, oh, yeah. <laughs> when I said she has AIDS. She yeah, doesn't look yeah. like what you would think someone yeah, with AIDS and, would know, look like. That's what I try to get through to the kids. Like, I go to schools and I, I talk to kids, you know, and I tell them, you know, everything from up and down, you know, what the deal is. You know, um, s you know, I don't push to safe sex. I tell them, you know, there's abstinence. But if you're not going to do this, try this. And if you... You know, and if that's not, you know, doing good for yourself, then, you know, this right. is what you got to do. Okay, so what, okay, so, so your husband also had AIDS. What about your baby? Well, thank God my baby's been tested like eight times and every single test has been negative, so my baby's fine. Yay! <laughs> that's good. Yeah. That's good. Okay, and, and your husband? Well, my husband died two weeks ago tomorrow. And um, yesterday was my first anniversary. Okay. But, you know, and I, I, I just wanted to say that when I heard that and I heard that you still wanted to come on the show, I mean, I, I think that that is just so well, great for you to you. do that I think this, for all of this us. This issue and is watching. It's so needed, you know, it really needs, everything happens in life for a reason, Jane, and I feel like I have AIDS because this is my reason, so I could come here and I, I could talk to people and people can look at me and say, look at that girl. You know, she doesn't look sick. She doesn't mm. even look like she's HIV. Mm. Well, you know, I'm past HIV, you know. Right. I wish I was just HIV, <laughs> you know, the way it's going. But um, what would you say, you know, you were talking about how when the doctor said that he wanted to give you an HIV test and you said, I don't need it. And, you know, actually when we were preparing for the show, the producers and I were sitting around talking and, um, and in this room full of producers, um, not one of them had had a test, an AIDS test. And they said that even though they felt like they should, they were so scared to find out, you know, the, yeah. the results that they weren't going to do. What would you say to someone like that? It's more scary finding out later down the road when it's too late to do anything. And, um, you know, I was thinking about what he was talking about back there. Warren. I know that, you know, like Warren says he doesn't like to wear condoms. And the message that I try to send across is you're not going to like to go to an AIDS doctor. You're not going to like to have taken medicine for the rest of your life. Okay. Number one. Number two. Um, Let me get Warren's reaction. Okay. Warren, what's your reaction to this? Does, is this sort of a sobering of thing for you? Uh, of course it is. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I have no... Uh, I mean, I, you know, I don't want to pr present myself as someone who's against all this stuff. I mean, yeah. I, you know, right. I behave responsibly. I have not in the past. Right. But as I said, the issue we're here was that given the choice, it's not enjoyable. Yeah. Right. And I know and it's, I, it's not know necessarily the smartest thing, and I, I'm not proud of it. Right. I'm not saying, oh, <laughs> screw, you know what I mean? I'm not proud of it. Right. But it's right. just, this is the way I feel. And as a result, I have, uh, abstinence has been the way that I've dealt with it over the last year. And uh, it's been easier. I mean, I... Uh, it, I don't deal with it as much. It's not an issue. I don't wake up going, oh. mm -hmm. you know, I don't do that. It's just, uh, <laughs> it's just I, don't, I, don't, I don't get involved right. unless I feel I'm with someone who I'm going to be involved with for a long term. Like my last girlfriend, we got involved. We were with each other for over a year and a half. Uh, I was with my husband for four years. Yeah, I mean, I'm aware. I mean, okay, it's, uh, you know, Warren, yeah. I've been ha I mean, I say this now. I've been having sex for 10 years. I've had a lot of different kinds of sex, and I have not had one sexual experience that's worth dying for. And unfortunately, that's what's going to happen to people that have unprotected sex. Mm -hmm. It's so scary that something as beautiful as sex can kill you. Right. And it's not a quick, quick death. It's a slow, brutal, deteriorating death. Mm -hmm. And it's the truth. And, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I wish I could do more. One thing I think is important to say um, for Warren here is that he does speak for a lot of guys out there Absolutely. and a lot of women out Absolutely. there, too, you, you know. Most of my friends, and he, and actually, very responsible guys, guys I have a lot of respect for. They're all professionals. They're not morons. You know, they're educated. But they get themselves into a situation with someone that they like and they think they can trust and they feel good about it and it happens and it's not the best thing, of course, I, I would profess based on circumstances right. like this, that not to do it, but it happens. And I know when we, were, when we were booking the show, there were plenty of guys who admitted that they were exactly like you and didn't use them, but they just wouldn't come on the show to talk about it. Right. So, you know, it's good that, it's good that you're here and, and, and speaking That's up about it. That's another point of view. That's do you right. feel like, do you blame anybody for this? Is there, no, I've said that before. I've never blamed one person for me having AIDS. Um, I do say that there is, there was a lack of education, and I'm doing something for that right now, and my friend okay. Jody, and you know, we do things, we go to schools, and we have to get through to kids that you don't have to look sick to be sick. Right. Like, if I would meet a man, I would, you know, I wouldn't, he would never, would never know. Right. And then he wouldn't even think once or twice about putting a condom on because I look fine. Right. You know? And that's the real 
It's a really scary so, part of, okay. of this disease. So you would say use condoms all the time, I'd say, no matter what? You know what? I'd say, you know, try abstinence. If that doesn't work, then I'd say masturbate. If that doesn't work, I don't mean to be <laughs> But it's condoms true. are the third option you know, for then, you. That's, and then, that's you know, good. if that doesn't work, then you go to condoms. Okay. And you know and be educated because okay. it's the truth, you know. It's really good. Thanks so you're, much. You're really, welcome. thanks. When we come back, you're going to meet a guy who can tell you why members of the gay community are having an especially tough time with condoms. with Russ and Maisha, who spend most of their waking hours trying to get people to wear condoms. Maisha hands out free condoms in New York City, and Russ works with the gay community in Minneapolis. Now, Russ, do you feel like there's a stigma? You said something about this before to the producer, that you feel like there's a stigma when a gay guy pulls out a condom in particular. Um, tell, tell me a little bit about well, that. Well, I think the disease has been stigmatized so long as a gay disease that um, what, I was, what I was referring to is that um, as a young person, if you're already dealing with so many other issues like coming out, um, you know, trying to find other people who are also gay or lesbian, that you trying to use a condom is just another thing to add on to that list, and it's very it's very frightening. Um, when I first started coming out, um, I thought, you know, I just want to find someone else like me, and that was about three and a half years ago, and so you know, condoms were not even something I was thinking about at that time. That's so, you just brought up a really interesting point because I was, I was thinking about this last night as I'm reading through this stuff and I was thinking about the fact that people who are really at the most, in the most high risk situations, which means like people who are either drug users or are struggling with their sexual identity for the first time or mm -hmm. are adolescents, I mean I hate that word, you know, it's like youth or whatever, but you know, young people are also the ones who are, have the hardest time saying we need to use a condom. Um, and I was, you know, I was talking to a guy about this, and he was saying that, that he has a hard time, especially the first time when he's with somebody. What would your advice be to someone in that situation? Well, I think there's good ways to get around that, especially if talking about condoms or using condoms is difficult for you. Um, I have a button that I'm wearing today that says safe sex slut. And I mean, <laughs> and you don't have to be a slut to wear it. I don't consider myself a slut. But what I think is that, um, is that there's, there's a way, this is a way to say I'm into safe sex. Um, I brought a condom rose for you, Jane. For this me. is a rose made of condoms. Aww. Um, you know, this is another great way. If, if, I never thank you. You're welcome. If, if you want to talk about this that, you know, it's difficult. Pink. You know. Embrace lubricated condom. Mm -hmm. oh, there are like four or five on here, huh? Okay, Jane, this is good. I yeah. Have a, I oh my God, now I'm going to get them. Anybody in the audience Valentine's want to give me condoms too? Condom thank you. Valentine's. I'll be like equipped for okay. life here after this show. Okay, now. Um, Maisha, speaking of this, this slut word made uh, me think about the fact that you work with a lot of, a lot of young people. Yeah. Men and women. City. And do you feel, for, for young women, is that part of the stigma that they feel? Is that, that if they pull out a condom, the guy might think that they're a slut? Do you, do you run into that? Actually, the biggest stigma, or is uh, the biggest obstacle out there is knowing how to talk about it at all, to bring up the subject with your partner, like even to just get around to it. Everybody's got the information now. People know how to use a condom or basically have access to using it. It's more about the communication and talking to your partner. So like that's, yeah, that is definitely the biggest issue. So you're out there talking to them about this and you hear a lot from young people. Why, why do you think the message to use condoms isn't getting through? Um, I think because people still think it's a hassle. And th them thinking that it's a hassle is more because they don't, it's not because they feel they're, not that I've experienced it, they feel they're going to get labeled. But it's just um, the consistency of it and having to do the whole, the whole deal of I've got to do this every time I have sex and I've got to, you know, make sure I have them available. And, you know, I have to, if I don't have any more in my drawer, I've got to go to the clinic. So what get, do you tell them to do? Um, basically what we tell them is that, look, the best way to protect yourself or one of the best ways to protect yourself is to have latex, not just condoms, all forms of latex available to you and, you know, have them in your house, make it so it's not such a big hectic All forms thing. of latex. Go ahead and tell us what you mean. What do I mean? Oh, and look, everybody's bringing props today, okay. <laughs> latex can be... Latex can be condoms, as we all know. Okay, just tell us what they are. Okay, or dental dams, which okay. are for oral sex on a woman or rimming. Okay, okay. these are actually... Um, okay, we got to get specific. Okay. It's okay. 
These are um, <laughs> these dental dams actually have smell to it, like they have like bubblegum smell. Um, some of them actually, <laughs> okay. some of them I've actually like seen vanilla ones and, and chocolate and strawberry and all that stuff. And um, I don't know if I have any finger cuts in here, but also rubber gloves, which can be cut into um, dental dams. You can den dental dams are kind of expensive, but you could also like cut rubber gloves into dental dams or use them, you know, for okay. fingering or stuff like They're that. They're multi-purpose. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what, what did you want to ask? Uh, it's to Warren. Whether you say yes or no to this question doesn't make you a rat or anything, but um, <laughs> like, do you have a condom on? How nice of you. Say, say you were leaving right now and some girl approached you. Did you have a condom on you right now, just in case? Like, right oh, I now. wouldn't have sex with somebody just right now anyway. Oh, go ahead. All right, that's No, good. that's my that's answer good. to the question. Okay, all right. You accept that answer? Well, he's a guy, but I, I don't know. What do you mean? <laughs> well, no, I'd like, I'd like to Any guy you would want to go and just have sex what? with a girl who... What's your name? Um, who What's your name? What's my name? Yeah. Brian. Brian, what do you mean, I'm a guy? What do you mean? <laughs> It's a general guy. No, I don't agree guy. with that. That's a stigma that I don't agree with either. I mean, I'm not just going to go out and have sex with somebody. I don't so need don't a condom on me because I'm not planning on going out just to have sex. It's not the issue. I'm sorry, Warren. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so so you can also, Brian. actually, Brian, you can hold these Sex for me while I run around, bad. and you can keep one if you want. I'll take the rest of them back from you later. Stand Jane, up. I'd like to say one thing. Sex isn't always planned. It's not, you don't always plan sex. I, you know, I mean, I never put that on my calendar. Well, you know, tomorrow's the 16th, I'm going to have sex, you know, where I'm going to meet this guy, and I'm going to so have sex. So that's why you need yeah, to have this stuff on you, have I, condoms or whatever I on you. I carry my condom keychain with me. It has a condom in it. So you, just so you can just open that up and always, get, take I don't, that out you whenever know, I mean, you need one. I'm not running around having sex, but I like to have That's new to me. I've never me. seen one of those before. <laughs> we'll get you <laughs> one. <laughs> to Carol? Yeah. Um, you were, your husband gave you AIDS? No. Oh, Nobody wasn't? gave me AIDS. Somebody passed the HIV oh. virus on to me. I don't know who. I don't know when. That's a good question, though, because your husband got AIDS independently of you. You both got AIDS through heterosexual so, sex. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, my husband was a non-IV drug user. He uh, didn't have any homosexual experiences. He would have told me. He would have been more open with me. And no, it's straight heterosexual sex. For both of you. Uh, both of us. Would it, don't, like, do they have like <coughs> AIDS testing for... Um, like ma when you get married, like mandatory. Where we got married it was in New Jersey, and the only mandatory test out there was for syphilis. Can I can I just say something? A lot of times, I mean, throughout this whole program, we've been talking about AIDS tests. And I just want to clarify that you don't get tested to find out if you have AIDS. You get tested for the HIV antibodies to see if they're in your blood. Um, so th just because you get tested doesn't mean you're going to have AIDS. It means that you have the antibodies in your blood, and th it takes a, like a bunch of other illnesses to make to make it, like, diagnose that you have yeah. AIDS. Your T-cells, okay. so. which is your immune Who up system. here can tell us what, what's the incubation period? Of the HIV virus? Right. Like, how often would you need to get tested to every make sure that you're all right? Every six months. Yeah. That's your last sexual Okay. Partner. I'm going to go tell my producers who were not <laughs> getting the test after the show. We're going to take a break. When we come back, you'll get some hands-on tips, no pun intended, or maybe, maybe it was intended, I don't know, for getting a reluctant guy to wear a condom. Condoms is theater? Okay, it might not be Shakespeare, but students across the country have been giving Star Theater their stamp of approval. Here's why. Um, I have to talk to you about something. What, right now? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, are you listening? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, wait, cool down, cool down, cool down. Okay, um, I've been thinking, and I've been thinking a lot about this, and I just think we have to start using condoms. Okay, let's go to your room. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa, wait a minute. Whoa. What are you talking about using condoms? I just, I want to start using condoms, okay? Oh, okay, I get it. So, so who, who is he? What? Who's the guy that you're messing around on me with? Oh, right, Joel. That is not what this is about, okay? No, Kira, that's exactly no, what Joel, this is about. No, Joel, I am seeing you and you only, okay? I just... I want to start using condoms. <laughs> Man, you know, why are you bringing this up now? I mean, we've been doing this. I've been pulling out. There's no problem. Oh, right. We know that is not safe, okay? This condom stuff, it's in my face everywhere I go. I mean, we've been getting so much closer. I thought we could talk about this stuff. Okay, so I, I get home after being with you and I think, 
What if? What if I get pregnant? Or what if I get some disease or something? Oh, please. I know that I'm clean. Oh, how do you know that? Are you a doctor? No. You could have something swimming around inside of you. <laughs> or I could have something swimming around inside of me and we could just be giving it to each other. Joel, this is not going to change anything. You won't even notice, I swear. Look, don't even start, all right? Because I'm not in the mood anymore. Oh, fine. You know, this is really hard for me to bring up. And if that's the way you're going to be, we just won't do it. Look, look, you know, I'm, look, it just, it won't be as good if I use one of those yes, things. Yes, it will. No, it won't. Yes, it will. No, it won't. Believe me, I know, it won't, okay? It won't. I mean, you know, it restricts me, you know, it confines me. Uh. You, it's a drag to put on. So I'll put it on for you. What? I know how to put on a condom. Well, how do you know how to put on a condom? I paid attention in health class. Yeah, well, I paid attention, too. Yeah. I guess I was paying more attention to you. <laughs> oh, come on. I mean, you know, the way I feel about you, I, I'd probably burst right through one of those things. Not the ones I have. You what? You have condoms? Um, yeah. And if we use it right, I don't think you'll burst right through it. <clears throat> so, want me to show you how I know how to put it on? Right here? I need to practice. Right now? Yeah. Well, okay. On your hand? On your hand. Thank okay. you. <clears throat> <clears throat> I don't think so. <sighs> That's more like it. Okay, so you carefully tear open the package and you take the condom out and you pinch the tip, holding it over the penis and you leave space here, you know, for your stuff. Stuff? Your stuff. Do not make me say that word, please. <coughs> okay, so you roll it all the way down to the bottom, taking all the air out. It's greasy. That's the nanoxonal 9. That's the good stuff. Mm. You can feel my hand, right? Mm-hmm. So you'll be able to feel me. Mm. So we do what we gotta do. Uh-huh. And you pull out holding it at the base. So you think you got it? Well, it seems simple enough. I'm glad we got the condom thing out of the way. So you'll use one? We just did. I mean, for real? We used your condom. Oh, that's okay. I have lots more. You what? What? <laughs> what do you think I am, Superman? I know you're Superman. <laughs> that when I first heard about um, a performance piece about using condoms, I thought, you know, it could be hokey. But then the producers went to see you guys and saw that the students that you were performing for had the exact same reactions as this audience. They were like this. You know, they were riveted through the whole thing. And what, do you get that reaction everywhere you go? Yes. You do. This scene, definitely. Yeah. We and also, we, we've been, I mean, we've been recreating this scene, you know, and we get feedback from the audience. I mean, we get the kids in the, in the, in the, in the audience saying, no way, you know, you, know, you got to do this, or, or yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it, you know, so we get the feedback. We change right with the way. times. Every time something new happens, you know, in high schools, we find out about it and change the scene. And that's why it's so real. It right. just feels so real when mm. you're doing it. Um, do, you, do you feel like this actually, doing this actually changes behavior yes. out there? Well, well it's, it's, it's really interesting because um, the show itself, I mean, you know, we're actors, we're putting on a show, we heighten, you know, consciousness and we get some questions going. What we now have is a follow-up program called Star 2. And that goes back into the schools after they see the show. Um, we're through actually the Mount Sinai Medical Center, through the Adolescent Health okay. Center. Good to with say the, that. Um, AIDS Prevention and Treatment Program. Try saying that <laughs> ten times fast. <laughs> um, so we do a thank show. Thank you for saying that so I didn't have yeah. to. <laughs> we um, do a show, and then after they see the show, we try to go back a week later and talk about what came up in the show. So you're going back, and you, it's almost like they had homework, and they had a week to think about it, and then we go back and address all these issues. I want to know if this is a familiar scene to anybody in the audience. I know a lot of people were like laughing and stuff like that, so obviously you related to parts of it, but what did you, what did you want to say? I was just wondering, um, I think what you're doing is fantastic, and obviously the audience seemed to like it too, but when you go to these schools, 
how do the parents seem to react to what their kids are seeing? Are they for it? Are they against it? Do you get a lot of flack from the parents? We're it's dealing with kids. We're not dealing with parents. And if we're accepted into a high school, the, the high school can handle whatever the parents want to, want to do about it. But we're, adre we're dealing with teenagers, and that's what we care about, and that's who we want to reach. You know, um, I want maybe addressing what you said. You know, Warren is up here, you know, and, and I think it's great that he is up here because he is representing, as statistics are showing, a, the large population. And I think a lot of us out here... All you think know, we're politically correct. And are, are, like, jumping on him. But I think a lot of us have been in those shoes. And, you More know, than anyone wants to admit. So we just wanted to support him a little bit. That's, that's, that's good. Like, that's, what, that's what we want to address with the show. <laughs> he you know? appreciates that. I do, too. Um, but I think this was a really good point that came up here, too. And I don't want to lose it, which is that there are a lot of people who think that everything that we're doing on the show today, giving out all these condoms and talking about them and even especially showing exactly explicitly how to use them the, the way that you just did, actually encourages promiscuity. No. A lot of people feel that way. We don't. We feel like it takes the myth out of things and it makes it tangible and kids are doing it and let's teach them how to do it right. I mean, what it does is it gives them options and it lets them choose for themselves. We want to empower them to make wise decisions, you know? And this whole Resolution 33 thing, I don't know if, you know, you want to get into that, but that was just voted as being e educationally unsound, you know? Yeah, I mean, Thank it's God. a really good point. It's a local issue, so people watching, right. you know, out in Kansas might not know about it, but it's a, it's a good point. Okay, we're going to have to take a break. Thank you so much. Okay. And when we come back, you'll meet a guy who turned condoms into a business. Okay, this is Adam Glickman, who started a chain of stores called Condomania. He's basically made a business out of getting people to wear condoms. Now, Adam, tell, tell all of us, who comes into Condomania? Who's buying them? We get everybody into Condomania. That's one of the best things about our stores. We cater to teenagers. We cater to the gay community, the straight community. We're multicultural, multisexual. Anybody who comes in, we will help. Who's coming in the most, though? Men, women? We're seeing a lot of women, ages 15 to 35. We have a lot of uh, teenagers who come in and say, I'm going to be having sex for the first time. What's the right condom for me? A lot of women who come in who are in their early 30s saying, I just got divorced. I haven't, I haven't used a condom in 10 years, or I've never used a condom. I'm about to be single again. Where do I start? What do I do? What condom is right for me? Okay, so if you, if you had to say, it's like, Women versus men, what would you say? What's the ratio? You get I'd say right now we're about 60 to 65 percent women and about 35 percent men. Okay, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So um, what do you tell, do you think that that's a good thing that women are so interested in, in buying condoms? Or? I would recommend to every woman who is sexually active to buy her own condoms. Reason is this. If a guy shows up with a condom, you don't know if it's been in his wallet for the past year and a half. You don't know if it's a condom which has been on a shelf in a store for four years. You don't know if it's the right condom, the quality is good. Maybe it was made in another country where it isn't quite as good. If you're a woman and you want to protect yourself, go down to a local drugstore, go to a condom store, ask questions, go to a clinic and find out what's best for you, your needs, your purposes, and then get it. Okay, what are women saying to you when they come in about why their boyfriends, husbands, whatever, don't like to wear condoms? What are you, what are you hearing about that? I'm hearing that a lot of women are having problems with the men in their lives. I don't like to use them. <laughs> we know that. Right. <laughs> That's old what, news. What we're trying to tell them is take some of the pressure off the guys. Enough guys have performance anxiety as it is. <laughs> And what we, had, what we need to do... <laughs> My Isha. What we need to do is make it easier for the men. If you're um, in a relationship, you're a woman, use the condom, put it on it for him. Better yet, let him know that you're going to take care of the whole thing so he doesn't have to stop, so he doesn't have to unroll it. He has enough anxiety to, to perform, make it easier for him, and then, of course, as we've all been saying, try to make it something even more erotic. Okay. Did you have a question for us? Yes. Adam? Um, Adam, why are you telling women to take full responsibility for this? You already said 60 to 65% of the people that come to your store are women. Come on, guys. Get, 
Get him, get him a store by condom. Unfortunately, we have to protect ourselves because nobody's going to protect us. Yeah. And it's up to us to protect ourselves. And, and I think the other... Go ahead, Maisha. A lot of times when the, when the men see the women, you know, being taking the initiative and doing it, it'll spur them on to go do it themselves. <laughs> because uh, in just in general fact, women just, you know... Women are leaders, yeah, is leaders what you're trying to say. really fast, and the men need some help sometimes. Okay. Stand up. I'm Carol's partner. Uh, I have AIDS too, and we go out together and speak. And what you're saying is you're making us responsible for your life. It's easier for a woman to get it from a man than a man to get it from a woman. And every person, man or woman, must take responsibility because they're the only people who are responsible for their own life. You can't sit there on a high horse and say that all these women come to you and you protect. You think you're acting like God. You know, you're not God. You know what? Go ahead. Oh, that's right. Please. No, yeah, I don't think okay. that's quite let fair, me, Adam. Say, go let ahead. Me, let me finish the second part of what I was going to say, and that is everybody needs to take responsibility. Our greatest challenge is not the women who come into the store, but getting the men in the store and then getting through to them. What I said was, if you're a woman and you really don't want to take any chances, make sure you have your own condom. However, our greatest challenge, both as a society and as a business, is to reach the men out there who are having problems with the concept. Okay, wait a sec, you're not mic'd here. Stand up. You stay there, I'm about to get to you. Everybody is responsible for their own life, any way you slice it. I've been positive for 12 years now, and I feel pretty damn good for 12 years of AIDS. And, good and, you know, good and for you. you can't sit there and say okay. But, okay. But under, understand, I'm on your side, and I, I advocate the same program. No, I think he does. I think that, that you're I, saying he's not on your side, but I, I think a key point here is that men are, even if the risk for women in heterosexual sex is greater, men are still at risk. And how much of a risk do you need, really? I mean, you could die from it. I think that's a big enough risk for, for anybody. Definitely. Let me, take the mic from let me say one thing. I, I think we're all happy in New York that Jane's back on the air again. Let me say number two that let me say number two that I think Warren is off his wall. He's not telling us the whole story. Carol, I commend you for being here in the audience. It takes great courage. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Jay, I have something to say. I was listening to what he was saying. He was saying if the guy doesn't want to put it on, then baby him. Put it on for him. You know why? That's what. That's what I was just hearing him say. You know, if he doesn't want to put it on, tell him that you put it on. Make it more erotic. Da 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 da. I think that's. Excuse me. I think that's the point that Jody was getting at. You know, I think that's what she was getting at. That he was saying pamper the man. I don't think that this issue needs to be pampered. I think that it needs to be blown in full force. Okay, let me, we, we're about to take a break, but Adam, I just want to give you one more chance to defend yourself here because I actually think that what you're doing is a great thing. I, I don't, you know, I don't necessarily well, agree with all this. I'm not, you know, this, putting I mean, him down. We all, we, all, we all sit here politically correct. And we all should, should, should. But we live in a different world where nobody does, does, does. So what, so, you're, so, so what you're talking about right. reality. So what we're trying to versus do versus what we all hope a, right, approach, would be. <laughs> approach what's really going on out there. In a perfect world, everybody would be responsible. Everybody would show up with a brand new shiny condom, and we wouldn't have as many problems. <laughs> but unfortunately, that's not the world. You know we're not the way it is. And what everybody does in their own I'm way. Really is, you know, whatever makes because it feel I don't good. think that he's out to save people's life personally. I feel like his condomania is more or less of a money-making deal. Well, uh, it I, is a money-making deal, but there are a lot of things. Okay, okay. No, there are I a think, lot of ways to make I money. I think if we're you know, here and, to talk about AIDS and how to protect yourself, I don't think that we should be here talking about money-making okay. and condomania. Okay, I think we need to we're going to keep fighting this out during the break because I have, to, I have to take a break here. When we come back, I get to play with a bunch of the latest condoms, and you get to watch. For free tickets to the show, write to Jane Pratt, care of Lifetime Television, 34-12, 36th Street, Astoria, New York, 11106. Or call Giles at area code 718-706-5273. You'll love his accent. We're back.
back with Adam Glickman, the founder of Condomania. And we were talking before about people were saying, well, this is a business, Adam. And yes, it is a business, but it's an important business. And at least you're really doing it the right way. Uh, tell me about how you go about training people in, in your store. Well, we take that. the challenges that are presented to us very seriously. Everybody who works in our store is trained to negotiate these issues of safer sex so that when someone comes in saying, I'm HIV positive or I'm gay or I'm a teenager about to have sex for the first time, we can give them responsible answers or steer them to a resource which is really going to help them out. Okay, when you say negotiate these issues of safer sex, do you mean also like actually showing them how to put on a condom? Is that part of Literally, it? Literally, we do condom demonstrations in the store. We talk okay. to them about how to talk to their partner. Um, an important thing about condom etiquette is how do you carry a condom? Uh, right. When do you bring it up? What, at what point do you start talking okay, about it? Okay, speaking about how you carry a condom, I thought it was really interesting when you were saying before that when guys carry condoms in their wallets, that, that that's not a good thing if a guy pulls a condom out of his wallet. And I always thought that's where he carried them. That's where my brother carried his. I thought, you know, that's where condoms go, in your wallet. They make a little ring on the outside right. when you carry them there for too long and all that stuff. Condoms should but, never be carried in the wallet, never. Okay. And not even for a night. There are condom carrying cases, stick it in your pocket. How you treat condoms is a very important There's issue. There's actually, there were these necklaces, too, that my producer, Beth, can you come up here? Beth, who, who produced this show, was telling me that there, there are these things that, that you can wear, and they're like necklaces, but you, you can carry your condoms in them. These are, these are a fashionable way to use condoms. And it's, don't they look good on Beth? Fun. Yes. <laughs> she asked me to wear them for the show, but I was like, no, you can come up and wear them instead. But I mean, it, they're in style. Just you, show you know, us how you, you, how open, you open them you, up. You, and you can take it like this, and you open it up very easily <laughs> and inside um, is a strawberry condom okay it's always a little bit more exciting than the regular condom <laughs> okay was more apt to use this you know if they know that when the moment comes it's, it's a fun it's way right to bring there it up. and they like the way it looks too yeah, thanks sure. and speaking of making them more accessible easily accessible show yeah. us what else you have up well, here on this I'm, whole display. I'm going to show you this first okay. I know that this looks like some sort of mutant condom but yes, in a nutshell does. condom technology is moving as fast as demand is now moving um, saying we want something better so that Warren and I and, and the guys out there are saying look don't give me the same old condom give me something that's gonna feel good this is gonna feel good this is a condom with a new latex pouch so that the condom actually moves around you as you move there's new technology it's not the same old Trojan anymore there are hundreds of different shapes sizes. what is this kind of condom called it's, it's called the pleasure plus okay. you can get this down at our Just store so you know when you go to the you store can, you can get it at specialty stores Condomania has a new safer sex kit to negotiate a lot of the issues we're talking about here today. There's there's um, information in there there's about a, how to talk about yeah, them. Yeah, there's a manual like that, that covers all these issues. There's an introductory of, to all these different products. There's also this thing um, that I was hearing about before about a new larger condom or something like that that you think... We now have larger size condoms, and we have to be clear on this. And this is not just for the guy's ego, right? You right. don't just hand this to him so that he thinks, you know, whatever. Right. It's, they really are larger. Yeah, we have to talk about this. Any guy who says a condom won't fit me, it's too small, is a liar. We can get a condom over anybody. However, however, <laughs> it is true that a larger size condom will enhance the uh, sensitivity and the pleasure aspect for many, many men. So when they say, I need a larger size condom, it can be a more, uh, a better experience using a larger size condom. Okay. Um, now, what else do you have up here? Show us a couple of other things. Um, well, we have the gold circle coin condoms, which were made popular by Julia Roberts. We have the infamous uh, glow-in-the-dark condom. What do you mean, Julia Roberts? Uh, in the movie uh, Pretty Woman, she said, uh, gold circle oh. coin, nothing gets through the sucker. Okay. That's I'm of out thing. of it. Okay, you're right, you're right. And then we just have new packaging, which is actually changing the way condoms look and the way people think about condoms. Okay, and speaking of that, I mean, I think that the key thing here and what we've been dealing with today is that all of us know that we need to be using condoms, but, uh, and there's a lot of information out there about condom use. The important thing that we all have to remember is that using condoms means being responsible for yourself, but it also means that you're being responsible to everybody out there that you are sleeping with, and that's the important thing. We'll be right back. You know, I also work on a magazine you should be reading. It's called Sassy, and it's on sale. 12 issues for 10 bucks. Call 1-800-96-SASSY to subscribe. You're watching Lifetime Television.
still a lot of questions out here and a lot of people who want to talk to people up on the panel and all that. Unfortunately, we're out of time. But if you stick around, you can still talk after we go off the air, okay? In the meantime, I want to thank our guests for being here. And I want to thank Adam for bringing so many condoms that we've got tons of leftovers. So who in the audience wants one or two or three or whatever? Okay. Raise your hand, you can Angela. pick out which ones you like. Oh, she wants the earrings yeah. over here. Okay, what do you guys want? Oh, my God. Help yourselves. Condom pop. He's getting greedy. He's taking like four over here. All right. Maisha, this is like what you do, right? You're familiar with giving these things up. They want some over here, okay? Which one? Huh? Is this, why does this one say George Michael on it? Yeah, that's the one I want. <laughs> George Michael's kind of like Now, stay tuned for guilt free shopping. Watch Supermarket Sweep and Shop Till You Drop next, only on Lifetime.